In the studio with me now is the singer and songwriter Joan Armour Trading from Los Angeles. The singer Estelle joins us live. And from Stuart, we have Stuart Cosgrove, the author of a trilogy on soul that begins with Detroit 67, the year that changed. So good evening uh, to all of you. First of all, Joan Armour Trading, when you think of the influence and the extent of that, what do you think about Aretha Franklin? Well, the first thing to say is that Barack Obama says when you hear uh, her voice sing, you can hear the history of uh, the, the people. But I think when you hear her voice, you can actually hear God. Because she came from the church, she has a God-given talent, I absolutely believe. And when she sings, uh, I, I think as somebody said, if she takes you back to church. She sings with something, you know, when you have this gospel upbringing and you're so kind of steeped in the religion, you're singing from the soul. Mm -hmm. This is why she's queen of the soul. Not just because of the voice, but the queen of the soul. And I think, you know, to, to have this God-given talent and to be able to inspire people and to be able to just show people from, from a very kind of humble beginnings, this is, this is what you can do. When you have a God-given talent and you use that talent, this is what you can do. And, I mean, she kept with the church her whole life. You can hear the church in everything she does, whether she's singing with Pavarotti or uh, uh, George Michael or, or she's singing an Adele song or she's yeah. singing the beautiful um, natural woman from Carole King. Doesn't, doesn't matter what she's singing, you can hear that. Uh, Stuart Cosgrove, um, it was inevitable that Aretha Franklin would start with gospel. Uh, and gospel back then became quite a commercial proposition. Well, yes, I mean, she grew up in a period where uh, gospel music was part of an entire itinerary of very entertaining shows that travelled throughout the, the big cities, uh, the southern states and the big cities of African-American uh, centres. And interestingly enough, C.L. Franklin, her father, ran a, a major gospel caravan. In fact, uh, one of the greatest ever gospel singers, Clara Ward, effectively became the adoptive mother uh, of Aretha Franklin uh, in her young life. And that was probably her greatest ever mentor. So yes, she was infused with the church, but we shouldn't naively believe that the church was somehow not uh, something that could reward you commercially. Because mm -hmm. from the very outset, she was a, a very kind of uh, savvy and smart uh, woman commercially. But she didn't, I was, uh, she didn't have it easy uh, in the beginning, did she? No, not, not at all. In fact, um, her uh, producer, uh, Jerry Wexler at Atlantic Records, used a term that has always kind of intrigued me. He described Aretha Franklin as Our Lady of Mysterious Sorrows. And, and what I think he was trying to signify there was that this is a very complex woman, uh, a, a woman that uh, in many respects had uh, enigmas around her, around her life. Uh, she had her ch uh, her first children very early, 14 and 15 year old. Uh, she, uh, it's no great secret that there was uh, agoraphobia in her life and she didn't always enjoy being out in public company and whatever. So she's an extremely complex woman as well as a amazingly gifted and epic generational woman. And so how just I want to bring Estelle in a moment about the next generation but Stuart how did she find her feet? Where, where was it she broke away because there were men in the early part of her life who weren't good to her but she had this extraordinary talent and she found her feet she managed to break out. Well, after a period of time uh, where she was recording for Columbia Records and she'd been, in a sense, quite ruthless, that none of it had been hugely successful jazz oriented soul. And it was her 1967 Atlantic album, uh, Never Loved a Man, the one you mentioned mm -hmm. uh, earlier in the introduction, that became this kind of uh, breakthrough album. Uh, and that was at the centre of a kind of notorious set of incidents in Muscle Shoals in Alabama, uh, where there had been disputes in the studio and she returned home to Detroit to with her father and vowed never to go back into commercial soul music again ah. they managed to talk her into flying to New York and completing the album and it's probably one of the greatest albums oh. of all time Estelle coming to you it, obviously you are from a quite different generation so presumably Aretha yes. Franklin speaks to you in a different way when you were growing up did you hear her music when you were a little girl Oh, all the time. Uh, as a child at home, uh, most notably in the Blues Brothers Respect, that was the first time I saw Aretha Franklin on TV. And then as I got older, I just, you know, you go and you delve and you start looking through music. And 
again, as everyone has said, her voice is something else. She managed to take everything she lived through and just push and just give it to us more and just give it to us in her music. It's, it's, a, it's a true talent where you're not mimicking anybody, you're not mm -hmm. doing anything that's been done before, you're just being yourself and letting it go through. And that's what she did with her music. You could feel it in every single note, in every single turn. It was just life, you know? And then um, also the idea that she did, as, as, as Stuart and Joan were saying, uh, cross genres and mix with so many different people and collaborate with so many different people. She was very open to all that. Yeah. There, is, there is not a single genre that um, Aretha hasn't touched. When you look back and you listen to every single one of her collaborations, another one um, that was prevalent in my childhood was Annie Lennox, Sisters yes. Are Doing It For Themselves. I mean, you know, yeah. like that was another one of the ones that kind of blew me away as a kid. And to me, it's, again, she set the bar as far as music and as far as what you can do and what you can achieve. There's not a single genre where we're not welcome. There's not a single genre that we cannot do as, as, as young women from the hood, from wherever you're yeah. from. You can do whatever you want, you know? Uh, Joan, in terms of um, defining cultural life in America, not just for African Americans, for people of color, but she, she, in Barack Obama said it, you know, she was a national treasure. She was a national treasure. She was a, she was a world treasure. Uh, when, when Aretha Franklin was singing, she didn't just sing for Americans. She didn't just sing for people who were into soul. She was singing for everybody. And I think the great thing about her is that she's able to say, I'm, I've come from this very kind of poor background. We just heard about all the different kind of hardships that she had to go through. But all of those things to her mm -hmm. were not obstacles. All of those things were things to help fuel to make. her. They, they absolutely fueled her. And I think this is something that I hear very often people say people don't know how good they were they are mm. she, I think she knew how good yeah. she, she, she was knew. Yeah. She absolutely <laughs> knew yeah. because you can't be that good and not know it yeah. just doesn't happen yes. I, I, I think that but isn't it wonderful when a woman knows she's that good eventually and just goes for it yeah and and, and Stuart just coming back to you the influence that she had on uh, on other, you know, Estelle here talks about it very openly as a child she was very influenced the, give me some sense if you think the influence she had in music, not only in America, but here too? Well, I think one of the things, and it's, it's kind of redolent of a, a now famous story about um, Aretha Franklin, is that she re-recorded and reinterpreted Otis Redding's respect. And in the process of doing that, utterly transformed the meaning and the purpose of the song, turned it from being a song about a, a rural guy who comes home to his kitchen, hands over his wages and wants respect in the family. <laughs> Suddenly it's the greatest feminist anthem of all time. And I think any yeah. woman or, or indeed any artist that has the power to transform the meaning of a song through their voice and through the kind of purpose they put into it, that's one of the greatest things of all time. Where do you think she was uh, uh, most successful then, Stuart, ter in terms of periods of her life? Because there were great periods of her life where she, she didn't perform, she, she didn't uh, have success in her albums. Well, I'm one of those dyed-in-the-wool purest soul boys, so you'll never get me to move away from 1967 when she was just the best singer in the world. And, of course, she grew up in a generation of, of rival singers. Sometimes they collaborated, often they didn't. Her own sister, Carolyn Franklin, uh, Sissy Houston, Whitney Houston's mother, mm. the late, great Linda Jones, Nina Simone. I mean, it was probably the greatest generation ever of African-American uh, female mm -hmm. singers, and she was at the pinnacle of it. And Estelle, in terms of your own music, do you hear, I mean, in your head, when well, you've just heard this great panoply of singers, female uh, African-American singers that Stuart's been talking about, is there a kind of feeling that you, when you're singing, that you're drawing on those influences? I think every single person, every single singer has drawn on Aretha. If you, I don't know who you are if you haven't. I, I, I don't know. Like, we... We don't know you, because <laughs> she she is the greatest, soul greatest influence in general. But you know? and Stuart, when you were talking about turning around respect to being an anthem, it's also an anthem for civil rights and feminism. Um, where do you think she stands in terms of uh, civil rights? Because as we were talking, talking to Jesse Jackson about, a lot of the work that she did for civil rights was incredibly quiet, unsung. Yes, uh, except in 1963. Uh, in Detroit, in her home city, 
Her father, C.L. Franklin, led a now very, very famous civil rights march through the city of Detroit down uh, Woodward Avenue, and she was one of the people at the front of that. Berry Gordy, the owner of uh, Motown Records, was at the front as well with Martin Luther King. And that was one of the, the marches that transformed the civil rights movement from being a predominantly southern and mm -hmm. rural movement into being urban and into the big cities in the, the, the northern parts of uh, America as well and so in that sense uh, she wasn't entirely invisible from the civil rights movement in fact if, if anything she was one of the the, the, the people that that, that, that that was most respected within the movement certainly in the musical and cultural area but that was early on what I was saying was that her, this work that she continued to do and, and quietly all the way through her life living quietly but giving to good causes latterly you wouldn't have really realized she was such a political force no, I think that's right, and I think really as as her, you know her life and her career uh, evolved, and the further that we moved historically away from the 1960s, then clearly, obviously, uh, a lot of that material. Uh, you know, faded into the mm. background of, of of political history. But anyone who was remotely interested in soul music in the 60s knew the power of Aretha Franklin. Estelle, in terms of the power of Aretha Franklin, what would be your favourite song that Aretha Franklin sang? Um, All-time favourite Aretha Franklin song is Daydreaming. Daydreaming. I play that several times a week, Do several you? times a day. You sing Amazing. it, sing it in the shower. Sorry? You sing it in the shower. Well, we're going to be playing out with that I, tonight. I, so you, we are going to be hearing that from Sister Sledge to live tonight. <laughs> Joan, your favourite thought about uh, Aretha Franklin? I, I, I think we should all be very thankful. It's a sad day. It's a sad day, but we should all be very thankful that we had this wonderful woman in our lives. Thank you all very much indeed. Agreed.